Hello and welcome back everyone. My name is Vladimir Romanov with SolusPLC.com and today we're going to be talking about a topic that I wanted to talk about for a while on this channel but didn't have the right hardware to demonstrate the setup that we're going to be doing today and that is of course safety circuits. So what I have on my desk right now are two Guardmaster relays, one of the new type. So if you're working in the industry you might be familiar with this specific relay and one of the old types so this is the old style relay that's a little bit simpler uses a lot of bit less of an io still just as reliable but it does have some different features and what we're going to be doing is essentially connecting a sensor i'm going to be showing you exactly how to use the color code that's going to be in these safety systems and here's the sensor guard sensor that we're going to be using for this specific tutorial we're going to be like I said, going through the data sheets, understanding the different color schemes, and ultimately creating a fairly simple circuit on which you can build upon once you understand the principles behind safety circuits. That being said, before we jump into the video, what I do want to mention is that this is by no means a replacement for a professional level safety examination of the machinery itself so this is just the control system side this is the electrical side you always have to perform the necessary uh, necessary caution and essentially uh, audits in order to understand machine safety how these circuits are being used for that specific application that being said we're going to take care of the wiring so that you can understand if you're troubleshooting a system if you're installing or commissioning a system that has been designed that being said, before we dive into the technical portion of this tutorial, I do want to mention that we've completely redesigned SolusPLC.com for a much better user experience. The technical tutorials that you're used to reading are still found under the tutorial section and you can browse and search through them in the search bar or you can simply scroll down and view all of the tutorials available to you absolutely for free. The next thing that you have access to is the new forum. So we've completely redesigned this as well. And if you want to post a technical question or perhaps a job, a suggestion, or otherwise that's related to automation controls or otherwise, you can do so on the forum. And that's usually the best way to reach me. The next thing that we can also access, and the most important one, is that the seven day free trial. So we've essentially redesigned the way we're selling some of our materials and courses. And if you're interested to give this a try, see if it's something that you'll enjoy. There's a seven day free trial available, at which point you can decide to unsubscribe or continue with the subscription, which of course supports the channel as well as the community. All right, so let's take a look at the hardware that we're going to be using today. And here's the Guardmaster DIS safety relay that you've seen earlier. On the front side, you'll notice that there's going to be a couple of indicator lights, the power input one, input two, logic in as well as the status of the output. Then there's going to be a very interesting toggle switch. If you're familiar with the old style relays, you'll notice that these are going to be reconfigurable via this faceplate. We'll get into this in just a second but you do need to be aware of the position that the switch is going to be in while the unit is operating. The next thing we're going to have is a power supply. So we do need to have a source of 24 volts DC. So this is the 1606 XLP Allen Bradley power supply. We're of course going to need our safety sensor. So once again, as demonstrated, here's the sensor guard. This is a food grade sensor very rugged essentially again protection against washdowns or any harsh environments that might be required in a food manufacturing environment and of course we have the matching interlock or actuator of the sensor we're also going to use some terminal block just to facilitate the wiring and that's pretty much it let's focus our attention a little bit more on the safety relay it does have some very interesting features like i said we'll look at this logic in just a second but you'll notice that the wiring is also very neat if you toggle these essentially breakouts you can pull this up and you'll notice that it will slide out the terminal connection that you can slide back in once this is put in place but what's also really nice is that you'll have a locking and a matching mechanism I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but essentially the two little orange notches are going to match with the two notches on the module. So essentially you cannot put this wired module into this side and you can essentially pre-wire your module the way you need it to be in the field before you actually install it, which you couldn't do in the older one. And it became for those of you who have had to troubleshoot these in the field on machinery it was a very tedious task because you do have quite a few wires coming out from the top as well as from the bottom. 
Let's take a look at the data sheet, figure out how we can wire this in. Let's take a look at the data sheet of the sensor. And then we're going to wire this in power on and I'm going to demonstrate exactly how the system is going to work. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is the switch adjustment that we can make on the front of the safety relay. And in the manual, you'll find all the available information based on your specific module. If we scroll down through the manual, which is going to be available through solosplc.com, we will find a section that talks specifically about the DI and DIS safety relays. Do remember that we are dealing with the DIS safety relay. Therefore, this is the appropriate section for us. And you may have noticed that I had the switch set to position five and position five by the description of function that we have here. You'll notice that it's going to take input one or input two or L12. And similarly, example one, so logic setting one or five, if any of the inputs, input one, two or 12, are in on, then the safety relays refers to the reset logic. And the reason for this is because we want to monitor a single input. So remember that we have a single sensor. In a more complicated system, you can daisy chain some of your sensors and different features. So you might want to check for multiple sensors. And in that case, of course, you would use an end function. So you do want to have multiple areas to be safe before you allow the safeties to turn on or allow the machinery to operate. That being said, like I said, we're going to do a simple demonstration here. I do want to turn over to the sensor guard, the 18 millimeter barrel data sheet. So once again, this is going to be posted, but this covers a lot of the different safety sensors that you will still find in the field. And if we scroll through the spaniel, you'll find, of course, the mechanical information. But more importantly for us, you'll find the electrical color scheme of the sensors. Now we are using an eight pin unit. We will see that in a second once we begin wiring, but you'll notice that the wire coloring scheme is listed right here. So white through red, as well as the signals that they're going to transmit. And this is going to be very critical for us because we do need to send the right signals into the right inputs of the relay in order for it to close when the machine is safe. We can of course read about the full operation of the sensor, but we do want to see one example of a diagram. So this is going to be a little bit different. You'll notice this is a timing diagram. That being said, it still provides us with information of how this can be wired. If you're a more visual person, instead of seeing them listed, you'll notice that brown, red, yellow, as well as blue are connected to power. So brown, red, and yellow are going to 24 VDC and then going down to ground. And then on the next sensor, you'll notice that what they're doing is the outputs of this pink and gray cable go into the next red and yellow cables of the second sensor. And then pink and gray are daisy chained until it reaches the relay. And on the last wiring, you'll notice that it goes into this S12 and S52. Do note that this is the old style of the safety relay that I've shown at the introduction of this video. We are dealing with something a little bit different. So we're going to switch back into the data sheet of the safety relay and see if we can find there's going to be some examples here as well. If we scroll through this manual, you'll notice that there's going to be some information on how to uh, essentially wire the relay in different configurations. And I highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with the different options that you have if you're going to be working with these safety circuits. That being said, here's the DIS safety relay configuration. And here's the simplest or most basic single input monitor reset that you can make available. So you'll notice that we are wiring an e-stop signal between S11 and S21 to S22 and S12. And that's exactly what we're going to do with our solid state safety switch. We'll get some examples of that as well. So as you can see, here's a high capacitive load, but ultimately, uh, the load's going to be here, but we are going to use OSSD one and two of our switch to be wired into this relay. So this could be another example of what we're, we can wire from. And essentially, let's get into the wiring and we'll look at some of these configurations, but we're going to be doing the simplest one with a single sensor. All right, so let's start by wiring in the power of the safety relay as well as the sensor. Per the diagram, you'll notice that the safety relay power comes into A1 and A2 which may be confusing to some 
of the new control systems engineers and or technicians furthermore you also have the markings here but it's not obvious which terminal is which and essentially the ways to look at it from the top this 45 degree angle i don't know how well you can see it on the camera but essentially this s12 is going to be the terminal all the way in the back and then s22 is going to be the second one in the back and a1 and a2 are going to be right here on the top so this is a1 and this is going to be a2 a1 is going to be my 24 voltage power so i'm going to insert that cable right here at the top like i said i can remove the terminal if i want to make it a little bit easier on myself as well as when you are in the field but i am going to secure that connection like so and I'm going to, of course, land that into my terminal strip, which has already been pre-populated by the power supply. I'm going to insert the wire. Make sure that the connection is nice and snug, like so. Next, I'm going to wire the ground. Like I said, that's going to be on my pin A2. I'm just going to tilt the module a little bit so you can see. So this is going to be A2. And I'm going to secure that wire in place like so and i'm going to land that on the ground side of my power supply once again making sure that the terminal block accepts the connection as expected i do tug on the wires this is something that i do in the field as well to make sure that the connection is made at this point we can start and test the safety relay so i'm just going to power on the system and make sure that the two lights on the dc power supply come on and on this power led i don't know how well you can see it if i tilt it this way you'll notice that the power light is definitely on i'm going to unplug the circuit and continue wiring so now here i have the pigtail of my sensor just as a quick reminder this is an eight pin connection which is going to mate with the sensor terminal right here i'm just going to put that aside but we do have the color scheme that we've discussed in the manual for the wiring and we do need to start off by wiring the 24 volt signals those are going to be my brown yellow as well as red connections i've just bundled them into one single cable and i'm going to land that on the terminal so i'm going to once again push into that terminal block make sure that the connection is nice and snug and then i'm going to wire in the blue wire so similarly to the color code of the safety relay and the power supply i'm going to land this blue connection here make sure that it's nice and snug at this point we can once again test the sensor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect the sensor into this pigtail and make sure that everything is good we should have the led on the top of the sensor come on let's test that right now and it looks like it's not coming on for some reason there we go so we've got an led for power it is currently red if i do approach the uh, the actuator you'll notice that it toggles to a green meaning that the safety is made of course nothing is currently toggling on our safety relay and that's because we haven't wired in the input therefore the output cannot of course come on and just to make sure that you see that once again with the light maybe a little bit easier to see but nothing is triggering as we would expect now so the next thing that we need to take care of are the inputs from the sensor and per the diagram you'll notice that the sensor is going to send two different signals on the gray as well as the pink wire so we're going to single those out gray and pink right here so gray and pink are going to go based on our schematic of OSSD1 and 2 into S12 and S22. So once again, S12 and S22 are the pins behind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the module just so you can see as well as me. And I'm going to land the gray as well as the pink cables into the appropriate terminals. And I'm going to secure them by using a flathead screwdriver, which I have been up until this point okay that looks nice and snug the next thing that we do need to take care of 
are the last two wires of the sensor. So I do want to briefly mention these, but essentially you're left with this green and white cables. And once again, if you refer back to the diagram, one of these is going to go into our PLC connection and the other one is going to be unused. So this is something that you can use to monitor the status of your safety sensor on your PLC side. And this is just something that you would that you should always wire in into a normal DC input and you can see the status of the sensor. And of course you can just display it as an alarm and I wouldn't use that for any other safety purposes. Last but not least, we do have the reset on the relay. So we've chosen based on the setting right here, we've chosen to use an automatic reset. We can also do it manually through a push button. But in this case, to make things easier, based on the diagram, we're going to wire in this S34 into a high voltage or 24 VDC. So once again, on this side, if you have something written on the top, it's going to be this input. And if you have something on the bottom, then it's going to be the outputs in the lower section of the module. So S34 is going to be right here. Just so you can see it is landed in the top module. I'm going to secure that into place. All right, so we are ready to test our circuit. As you can see, the power status light is currently green. The light on our sensor is red. Once we bring in the actuator, you'll notice that the sensor is going to go green. The input one, as well as the outputs of our safety module are also going to energize and essentially in the field, allow machinery to operate. Once this door, for example, or safety guard is unlocked, the safety relay as well as, well, first the sensor and then the safety relay drops out by monitoring the safety and essentially not allowing any of the machinery to operate. And of course, we haven't covered necessarily how to send these outputs to, let's say, a VFD or a kinetics drive, but that's going to be something that's covered in the manual. And we may have a topic on it on solusplc.com. But that's pretty much it for now. I'll see you guys next time. And if you have any questions, once again, feel free to post them on the forums at solusplc.com.